If you are considering moving to the Kansas City area in 2024, then grab your pen and a notepad because this is going to be your ultimate relocation guide. a new city or a new state is usually pretty overwhelming and I'm sure that if you're anything like me your head is gonna be full of questions that you want to have answered before you make that move questions like is Kansas City a good place to live what are the best neighborhoods is Kansas City safe how's the traffic what's my real drive time on my commute going to be what is the cost of living what are the best schools so many more questions and you probably are wondering how in the world did I know your questions? Well, one of the things that makes me unique is that I have lived in both sides of the state line. I've lived on the Kansas side of the state line and I've lived on the Missouri side of the state line. So if you don't know the geography of Kansas City, Kansas City actually sits right smack dab on the state line of Kansas and Missouri. In fact, there's actually a street called State Line Road. So most of my life I have lived on the Kansas side. However, about seven years ago, my family decided to move to the Missouri side and we purchased my father-in-law's house. And this house was actually the house that my husband grew up in most of his childhood. And so it was kind of a special purchase. And yet what was kind of interesting is that we literally moved from one side of the western side of the city to the eastern side of the city and so I'm here to tell you about my experience I'm here to kind of demystify some of the things that you might be wondering about regarding the state lines and probably have in your mind that need to be answered I'm hoping that I can give you some really good information so that you can make a qualified decision on what is best for you and your family so be sure and save this video because we're gonna be covering a lot about Kansas City and why the area and the neighborhood is so great an overview of some of the cost of living, employment, education in the school districts, um, lifestyle and recreation, climate, weather, pros and cons of living here in Kansas City, and so much more. And if we've never met before, my name is Anita Cordell. I'm also a licensed real estate agent here with the Yellow Brick Group, and we help people all day long buy and sell and relocate here in the Kansas City metropolitan area. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. My contact information is going to be listed below, and I've made it super easy because there's even a link directly to my calendar so that if you wanna schedule a time to meet up with me uh, that's convenient for you, you can just click on that link, and then we can make a jump start into making your real estate dreams and goals a reality. So trust me, I know that this is a very big decision, and we are more than happy to help you. Now, I can actually vividly remember the moment when we decided to move from the western side of Kansas City to the eastern side of Kansas City and cross the state line. And I remember making that decision. And, you know, when I'm working with clients, I remember that as well because there is a distinct difference between Kansas and Missouri. And some people really hone in on that difference. And then other people don't really notice it at all. But it's better to live in an area that you're comfortable with. And so sometimes people have a choice of where they want to live whether it's Kansas or Missouri. And so I know there's sometimes a question of which place is better to live. So I'm here to tell you about my experience and just some of the overall dynamics of it. Now, the thing about Nathan and I's decision is that we are fortunate enough where we weren't really bound to a state one way or the other. Now, some of you who are watching this might be coming in from a, a job interview or you might be coming in for some other reason, whether it's family or not, and you need to li live in a certain part of the city. Our kids were getting a tad older and we were a part of club ball and various activities and yet it wasn't like we had to live in a certain area to be a part of that. My daughter plays competitive softball, or she did at the time, and now she plays in college, but we were on a competitive softball team and people drive all over to be on competitive sports teams. And so it wasn't like we were tied to a certain area. In fact, we homeschooled at the time, and so we didn't have any emotional ties to any any school districts or any school systems or whatever. So at the time, it was just a perfect moment for us. Plus, 
I've worked from home uh, since the day that I started real estate most of the time and so we've had a lot of flexibility and we had a lot of flexibility during that time and so due to the fact that both of us really weren't tied to it, we lived here most of our lives and our knowledge of the city and the school districts and all of that played into it, it just knowing the area it all just came kind of natural to us. But I understand that sometimes people who are relocating into the city have questions and when we were moving there weren't any channels that would help people answer those questions or better understand areas and it just was very easy to become Dr. Google and so even in the questions that I had even though I knew the area and stuff there might have been some questions that I had there just wasn't any channels out there that could answer those questions so really I've been able to understand the city even more by living on both sides of the state line so I'm hoping that this channel will help you understand the city better and help live in this with your lifestyle and take into factors whether it's economy or home prices or whatever taking all of that into consideration. I've had tons of video calls with people just like yourself who have reached out to me about moving to the area and they have a lot of questions about the city, the area, what kind of information I can provide and so my goal in today's video is to share that information with you and walk through some of the exercises that I went through myself and as well as pass on to other people. Now I wish I would have documented all of what I had went through moving from one side of the city to the other. Um, it would have been really fun to go back and listen to some of the things that I said and things that I thought and felt but I still remember a lot of stuff and really the difference in that situation was I didn't go through a lot of detailed searches for homes and stuff because I already knew kind of the area and I feel like the house chose us versus us choosing the house I don't know but my experience can actually help too with how to choose a neighborhood when you have that time frame. I hope you get a ton of value from today's video and if you do, please click that subscribe button and then click the little bell and that way you'll get notified anytime I post something new just like this one. So the qu first question that I want to tackle is why Kansas City? If you're coming here with a job or your family or whatever you already know the answer to that but if you are exploring the area and are just wanting to know more about our amazing city then you know that over the last probably 10 years, Kansas City has really become a lot more popular than what it used to be. And over the last four years, it's literally felt like it's exploded. You know, the low cost of living, the great entertainment, great sports teams, you know, there's something about our lifestyle here. We've got a great vibe. It's just an amazing atmosphere. Most people don't even know about all of the amazing aspects of Kansas City. In fact, when I'm traveling and people ask me where I'm from, they think that I live out in this far away, you know, area of our, our country on a flat, wheat field where there's just tornadoes every time it rains just kind of random myths but those are indeed myths in fact Kansas City has rolling hills it has lake communities we've got golf courses very little wheat except when you go way 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 out west of Kansas we've got a jazz district we've got parks We've got the Katy Trail, which people ride their bikes on, and it's just a really diverse vibe. Every single area is different. It just depends on which area of the city that you wanna live in and which area of the city you want your community to be built on. And I tell people all the time that it's, it's a small, big city DNA. How's that? <laughs> in fact, in the Travel and Leisures magazine, just in January of this year, it was on the list of 50 best places to travel in in 2024. So we were ranked right next to Bangkok and Istanbul for big city thrills. I mean, it was so cool. I can understand it because we have world famous barbecue and jazz. Kansas City now has been a global leader in the sports and entertainment industry. In fact, keep your eyes out for KCC, that's the Kansas City Current. That is our national women's soccer league and we have the first ever purpose-built stadium for women's pro sports. 
That was a really hard thing to say really fast. Anyway, we are also rich in the arts. We have a free Casey streetcar. We also have the Rock Island Bridge. It's this reclaimed rail crossing over the Kansas River. It's gonna have two different levels of entertainment and two restaurants. It's gonna have a covered patio event space where they're gonna have a dance floor and a veranda seating overlooking the river and the city. So amazing. Another reason why people want to consider Kansas City is because of the low home prices. Kansas City ranks among the cities with the lowest barrier to home ownership and it's boasting a lower than median household income compared to median asking price, according to Realty Hop. Now, of course, the numbers are gonna change depending on what area you're going to live in, but we're gonna go into a deep dive with the suburbs and the inner city and the neighborhood living. So bear with me because there's gonna be a lot of information going forward regarding Kansas City, why people are choosing Kansas City. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is just kind of our neighborhood and just in general, the geography overview, because I think it's really helpful. A lot of times people will come here and they get kind of confused, like what's the difference between living in Kansas and Missouri? and you know how's this gonna affect my employment and all of that so it can be a little bit confusing where things are at first whether it's Kansas or Missouri and many people don't understand the whole layout of the actual city and in fact there's actually two Kansas cities there's two states here and there's a Kansas City Missouri and a Kansas City Kansas so a lot of times if you will go out and travel you'll be able to tell if somebody actually knows their geography about our city because when I tell them what, where I'm from, they will ask me, are you on the Kansas side or the Missouri side? <laughs> so some of you guys are getting really educated. So there are all kinds of things to consider, but most importantly, it's gonna be about your lifestyle and what you like and your family dynamics. So we're gonna go a little bit deeper into this and just help you understand a little bit more about our city, the real estate, what you can expect in the overall community amenities, and just give you a little bit more insight because Kansas City is an old city. A lot of people don't know some of the neat, neat things about our city. So we've got some really old neighborhoods, <laughs> year old houses and then we've got some really well-developed brand new communities so it doesn't always fit the lifestyle somebody might want a new construction home before they would want a really old property that needs a lot of resources and a lot of updates and what have you some people really like the old character of like the Waldo area but some people really want a lake community and actually believe it or not there are lake communities within the Kansas City metropolitan area there are more on the Missouri side than there are Kansas but there are some lake communities and some of them actually have gated communities as well so some people want that kind of thing some people want the urban lifestyle you can have that here in Kansas City so this is just really a great way to kind of show you where it is and also too depending on where you live and where you work it's gonna affect your drive time so we're gonna talk about that as well so now as I said before the Kansas City metropolitan area sits right on the state line of Kansas and Missouri. In fact, we have that street called State Line Road. Now, we are not small. The greater Kansas City area has about 2.2 million residents. So each area is gonna feel a little different and you'll be able to actually tell the difference. Okay, here's a map of Kansas City and I wanted to just show with you a high level bird's eye view of our city and just give you kind of an explanation for the layout of it. A lot of times when people go out of town and they're traveling, they're asked by somebody where they live. The biggest answer is literally just Kansas City metro area. A lot of times people don't wanna explain the difference between the Kansas side and the Missouri side. They just say Kansas City in general. Usually that means this entire circumference, even down a little bit north of this. But if somebody lives in this general area, they'll answer the question, I live in Kansas City or the Kansas City metro area. Now, this city is one of the few cities that actually lives on a state line. And what they do is it follows the river here, anything north of the river. So you'll hear Northland. So any of anything that follows the river, and then this right here, this comes along here, and that is actually State Line Road. There's actually a road that is called State Line Road, and you're, when you're on the west side over on this side, it's Kansas, and when you're on the Missouri side, everything 
along this area. Then it's divided up. I typically, when I give numbers out, I will give numbers that deal with six different counties. So I feel it, there's more counties than that because our metropolitan and the MLS, as you can see, goes way out to Lawrence and here's Lawrence here. But there's six main counties that I will track. First, we have Platte County, which is over here. Then we have Wyandotte County, which I'll label as W. Um, then we have Johnson County, which is anything um, really about here and beyond. So all of this is Johnson County and it goes all the way till about to here where my arrow is. Wyandotte County and Johnson County are the two main Kansas counties. If you're looking in the greater Kansas City metropolitan area, we can, Leavenworth is way up here, which is another county, but we're gonna deal with just the six main ones. Then you're gonna deal over here with Jackson County. Jackson County is our biggest county um, here in the metro area and it covers all this area. I mean, it's, it's huge. And then about here to the arrow is Cass County. It's getting a little messy here, but anyway. Okay, so this is Jackson County. Um, and this is Johnson County. A lot of times people will say Joco, J-O-C-O. So Johnson County is on the Kansas side. Jackson County is on the Missouri side. Then you've got uh, Cass County here. And then you've got Platte County here. And then you've got uh, Clay County here. So these are the four or the six main counties in the Kansas City metropolitan area. Um, as I said, the largest is Jackson and Johnson County. Those two are the largest ones and where a lot of uh, Johnson County is where a lot of the more expensive properties are. Um, it's a little bit comparable to some in, in Platte County and then there's just a fraction of areas like you're gonna find um, in the Waldo and uh, uh, near the Plaza area. You're gonna start to find some of the higher, more expensive homes in Jackson County. Speaking of the layout, when we're talking about the age and the best age to live in those properties. I've spoken before too about the average age, but when you're here down in the Raymore area, you're gonna start to get a little bit more of the higher average range. And because people want to live close to the Ozarks, so if you live in this area, you're going to um, be closer to the Ozarks and Branson and, and that area. Um, airport is right up here. Um, and so you'll want to gauge how far it is away from the airport to where you want to be at. Um, typically from Raymore to the airport, it's going to be pr roughly about 50 minutes, something like that. If you live over here in like the Shawnee area, all you have to do is hop on 435 and head to the airport and you'll be there in no time. So it takes about 30 minutes from there. Sorry, I'm not a very good drawer. Then same thing with here. If you're over in like the Blue Springs area, it takes roughly about 40-ish minutes depending on traffic. And there's multiple different ways to get around the Kansas City area. This, this highway here is 435 and it goes all the way around our city. So uh, you'll basically have, I mean, if you ever got lost on Kansas on 435, you will you will stay on that and just circle the city. I hope this map gives you a bit of an understanding of what our city is about. Always remember that we are encompassing two different states, and those states are Kansas and Missouri. People make a lot of times they'll make a decision based upon what side of the state line they want to live on, whether it's Kansas or Missouri. If you have any questions about your taxes and how that relates to your taxes, then please ask your accountant because where you live could determine some decisions that you need to make regarding finances or taxes and whatever. So make sure you talk to your accountant about that. And I hope this uh, answers some of your question about the layout of 
Kansas City and the metro area. So certainly feel free to reach out if you have any other questions regarding that. Let's talk about the median age because I think that that's important to talk about when we are describing what is going on in our city. One of the things to take into consideration is whether or not you wanna live in an area that kind of is median age to where you are. Median age in the Southern Kansas City area on the Missouri side gets a little older and then there's certain pockets of the Kansas side where it's rather I should say wiser. So it'll give you a little bit of a different areas, have a different median age range as the residents move farther south of the Kansas City metropolitan area into Cass County, then the median age can be 40 versus the next city over, which is Belton, which is about 33, which is the median age. Gladstone median age is about 41. Blue Springs is about 35. Lee Summit's about 39. Overland Park and Lenexa and Shawnee, they're all about 39. And then Olathe, it's a little bit younger. Some of the younger professionals live there. It's about 35 years old median age. And then Baser is about 36. Kansas City, Missouri is about 35. Kansas City, Kansas is just a tad younger at 33. Tonganoxie is 33. Another area that's about 33 is Oak Grove and Grain Valley. Then Mission Hills is roughly about the oldest median range in age and that's roughly about 49 to 50. All right, so when I'm pulling up the MLS and I see new construction, if you are somebody who is really wanting new construction, then you're gonna see where the new construction pockets lie. Now there are some in the Kansas City, Missouri area. There's also some way out in the southern parts. There's some new construction in the outer skirts and in the subdivisions around there, but you're gonna see some pockets of the city that there's literally no new construction at all. If you're wanting something that that is in kind of the urban sort of feel, there still is opportunities for you to get new construction here in Kansas City. Okay, so you are in my MLS and I wanted to show you just what it looks like when it comes to new construction. So I grabbed the six main counties that I track in Kansas City, in the metropolitan area, both on the Kansas side and the Missouri side. I grabbed all of the properties that are either never occupied under construction or that there's a model for sale. I mean, even though the model is not for sale, there's a community at large in that area. And then obviously I did two years or less because some of the new construction will sit on the market for a while. And I grabbed only single family homes here. Okay, now let's look at the map. So as you can see, the map consists of quite a number of new construction deals. If we scroll out a bit, you're gonna see where the main areas of new construction are. So I am going to scroll in and just give you kind of a taste. So looking at the map, you can already tell that there's just literally no new construction here. Um, this right here is uh, Jackson County. Um, there's a lot of renovation going on right here. And then obviously this is um, Johnson County here. Um, and then this over here is also still Johnson County. There's some good neighborhoods over here getting, getting built. Okay, so as we're looking at this, as you can see, there's a lot of new construction and there's a lot of a lot of communities that are being built with new construction communities. I'm gonna scroll this down here. Um, Raymore's got some great communities as well. Um, here's some more here next to Longview. Um, you can just see that, that we have quite a number of new construction um, properties that are both in the Northland as well as outside the Northland. As you can see, there's a lot of new construction properties that are being built. So I just wanted to give you guys an update on, or just kind of an overview of all of the new construction properties that are going on. Now I will say this, that if you're choosing and electing a new construction property, you wanna just, take into consideration the cost of that. 
because a lot of times it's actually cheaper to buy a new construction property versus one of these older properties that are you know in the in the Waldo or district here um, or in the Westport area those those because the houses are going to be older it's going to take a little bit more t uh, money and resources to upgrade them versus a new construction property you've already got that all done so taking into that consideration i just wanted to give you guys an uh, idea and an overview of our city and new construction also too when it comes to new construction always be represented if you go in and you talk to the the listing agent you are going to not be represented fully and so the listing agent has a contract with the actual uh, seller which is usually the developer or the builder whoever owns it and they have a fiduciary responsibility to the sellers they do not have a fiduciary responsibility to you so I recommend always having a representative so if you're looking for new construction please let me know and I would love to help you so let's talk about drive time and miles on the map pretty much everything to the airport so uh, the airport is north of the city and I feel like everything south of the river is gonna take you anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes to get to the airport. It's on average, so give yourself about 45 minutes. Our airport is awesome. We just had it remodeled and it's amazing. It's a lot bigger than what it used to be and so it's been a little bit of an, a learning curve and learning where to park now, especially if you are a frequent traveler and you just go there and go right to the same parking garage and whatever but it's been an amazing um, addition to our city and we've been having a lot more flights scheduled to our city because of the new airport and the level of traffic that it can handle so that's been good obviously if you're close to the airport your travel time is going to be only about 10 to 15 minutes but Places like Shawnee and Blue Springs. Uh, Shawnee, it only takes about 30 minutes. Blue Springs, it'll take about 45, and then anything extra, it'll take about 45. I usually give myself about 45 minutes just to make sure that uh, I get there on time. Don't hesitate to reach out. My contact information is below. So don't hesitate, reach out and ask me anything you want. I'm here of service, I'm here to help. Now, when it comes to the cost of living here in Kansas City, there is one thing to know and that we sit really right below the lower range of the United States. In fact, the last that I read, we were about two and a half percent below the national average of cost of living. And according to rentcafe.com, both the Kansas City, Missouri City proper and Overland Park, Kansas, have both landed in the top 10 cities for renters to watch in 2024. Both of those cities are in high demand and there's a lot of job opportunities, so that's why people love living in those two cities. There's a website called payscale.com and you can pop in Kansas City and actually look and see where your pay scale is and how it breaks down every single category, which is something really awesome to look at. It's a great reference and it'll break down Again, like your salary, it breaks down all these categories like your, your housing costs, your groceries, transportation, energy costs. Breaks it all down so that you kind of know what to expect here in the Kansas City area. And so a pro of living here is it's normally more cost effective to live here than it is in other cities. And so overall cost of living here in Kansas City is actually extremely affordable. And I tell people all the time, when it comes to living in the Midwest, it's actually a really good value, especially when it comes to housing. Now, at the time of this recording, the median sales price in the United States, according to Redfin, is right around 402,000. And the median sales price here in Kansas City is actually a lot lower. It's about 312,000. But I wanted to go a little deeper into this because if you're looking for a single family home here in the Kansas City, metropolitan area it's different depending on the area that you choose and the median sales price is going to be different even across the state line is a little different so now I know that people ask like what's the difference between average and median so basically the median is if you take a hundred properties the median is like number 50 and that's like right smack dab in the middle of all of the activity but the average is obviously basically you take from the bottom all the way up to the top and then you divide that by the total number of sales and that will give you the average and so the average actually is what I'm finding people are actually selling their properties for versus the median 
So let's look at what that looks like. The median, just like I said, here in Kansas City, the median is about 312, but on average, I'm seeing people spending around the 400 price point. Now, you can actually go and spend one to four million dollars on some of these lakefront properties or the gated communities that are here in the area but if you want a single family home you can absolutely find a single family home in the low 400s and even the high 300s and you can get even something in the twos if you if you nab it really fast <laughs> it is all about perspective and it's all about where you're living in the city but i felt like it was important to just go over those numbers with you because like i said the median sales price is 312 but on average, it's a bit more than that. So you can see that properties and the average sales price and median are a little different in some areas based upon the style of home. Now, as far as the age is, the, is concerned, a lot of times people think that new construction is a whole lot more expensive, but the reality of it is in the real world, if you're buying a new construction home, then it actually can cost a little bit less to own your home because when you're buying it, you don't have all of the repairs and all of the upgrades that you're needing. You're going in there, the builder has pretty much done everything. In fact, they'll go through a punch list and walk you through that punch list and fix pretty much everything. They'll also give you a 10 year structural warranty and then they'll do like one year punch list. Well, they'll come back after a year and do some of those repairs, unless you of course caused the problem. So when it comes to housing, just do your homework. Don't hesitate to reach out to us and ask any questions that you want because there's a lot of things to factor in, a lot of things to consider when you're buying a home, especially in this area when you're figuring and juggling the two states. And some people actually live in one state and they work in the other and or, or you know vice versa kansas and missouri they want to know the difference between you know what if i lived in missouri and worked in kansas and what if i lived and worked in kansas so those are questions that you would definitely want to talk to your accountant about to see how the taxes would affect but then there's also some different style of homes a lot of the houses that are really old and are in the Waldo area per se or near the plaza. Those are a lot older. They're the Tudor style homes. A lot of them don't have a finishable basement, but yet they're so fantastic and have so much character in it. It's like every house has its own little story. So no matter what kind of house that you're wanting to look at, you just want to remember that the communities are different. There's a lot of areas that you might not even consider if you didn't know what was there. And so the lifestyle and what you're wanting in a community is going to make a big difference. Now there are two things that I recommend that you do with today's video. Number one, make sure that you save this video so that you can go back and refer to it just in case you saw something online that didn't measure up, but it's a great way to make sure that what you are looking for and all the resources that you're looking for is there. And so come back and check out those websites. Number two, while you're down there, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and click that bell. I really hope that this channel is something that will help you out. It's helped out a lot of people. And if you do that, then you're contributing to futuristic people also being helped with this channel. Now, when it comes to the education of Kansas City, we have so many options. Our public school system might be a little bit different than what you're coming to right now. We don't have a public school system to where that you just choose whichever one you go to. Here, we have school boundaries. It's operated that way. And so you can find the school boundaries on the school district websites. And so if you're looking at several different areas to live in, my suggestion would be to go to the school district website and see if the houses that you're looking at are in that specific school district. Sometimes every once in a while, there's an error online. So you wanna make sure that you have that. When it comes to K through 12, we have a great mix and a great opportunity here in the greater Kansas City area. You've got your public schools, which I mentioned, but we've also got some great private schools. We have charter schools. We've got some magnet schools. We even have some technical schools. My son, actually, after we finished homeschooling, we started in a private school when he was in the eighth grade. When he was in the 10th grade, he applied and got accepted into a technical school. And that technical school was uh, works with your sending school 
and he was able to graduate with an associate's degree or an equivalent to an associate's degree and he's now doing engineering. It's amazing some of the stuff that's uh, available and the resources that are available. So there's a lot to choose from, a lot of different options and of course if you are not wanting to be in the public school system and you want to have those different options you can and there's also some great homeschooling communities here in Kansas City and those are also an option. We have co-ops and the co-ops are all throughout the city. In fact, I was in one of those co-ops when we homeschooled years ago and they are still going strong to this day and in fact have expanded and they're fantastic. I have friends who have their kids in the in those homeschooled programs now too, uh, the co-ops. So it's, it's really, really a great community when it comes to schools. Some of the notable high schools in the area are Mill Valley High School, in fact, Mill Valley High School had the highest rank on greatschools.org in the entire metro area. Other notable ones with a ranking of seven or higher on greatschools.org are Olathe Northwest, Grain Valley, Blue Springs, Lee Summit West, Park Hill, Park Hill South, both Blue Valley High Schools, and Baser Linwood High. These are just public schools that are ranked this high. This is not including any of the private schools, or any of the charter schools and they're also top notch. Now if you've got some college age kids that are considering transferring here or considering going here, there's some major universities in the metro area. There's the University of Missouri of Kansas City. There's the University of Kansas. Rock Chalk Jayhawk, I'm an alumni, so of course I'm gonna tell you that. Rockhurst University, Avila University, Park University, the Kansas City Art Institute, well-renowned with that William Jewell, University of St. Mary's, Mid-America, Nazarene University, and then there's quite a number of other smaller universities, and then there's also two-year colleges. Now, when it comes to trying to judge are these schools the right fit for you? And if your family is going to like those schools in those areas, and if you've got school age children and you're trying to figure all of this out, I understand completely. But there are two things that I highly recommend that you do. One, go to review sites online. I know that these online review sites are not the end all be all kind of a thing, but I wanted to share with you that there are two really good sites that I always recommend. One of them I already mentioned, which is the greatschools.org website, and the other one is publicschoolreview.com. These are two wonderful resources that I love giving out when clients move into town and when I have people considering taking their kid from one school to the next, it's always really good to read the reviews. Now when it comes to lifestyle, recreation, activities, there is so much to do here in the Kansas City metropolitan area. I mean, you have everything at your disposal. Shy of living on a beach, you've got a lot of things to do here. A lot of different clubs, activities, sports. As I mentioned before, my daughter was on a competitive softball club. It was a traveling ball team and she is now one of the starting pitchers of a college here. There's so much even if you homeschool. There's so much to do. You definitely get your kids involved in all kinds of stuff and in fact there's like pickleball. Do you love that? Do you love baseball? Do you love tennis? Do you love hockey? Do you love soccer? Softball, of course. I mean, literally there's so much to do here in the Kansas City metropolitan area. In fact, we've got the Kansas City Chiefs, we've got Sporting KC, we've got Royals, and those are just part of the professional sports. In fact, we're going to have the women's soccer here. There's just a lot going on here. The other thing about activity is if you are a runner or a biker, there's a lot of bike clubs here. As I mentioned, there's Katy Trail. The Katy Trail is a trail that spans a lot of the Missouri state. They'll go along the Katy Trail, they'll stay along there, they'll walk it. You'll just see a lot of people enjoying those kinds of landmarks. Right now it's in the middle of winter and even though there's no snow outside, I could still go in snow. We have actually Snow Creek Resort that is in Weston, Missouri and if I wanted to go and ski there, I could go and have a really fun day skiing instead of going off to Denver. <laughs> ice skating, we've got multiple locations if you want to ice skate. There's also some rinks where you can take lessons. There's just something to do for everyone here and the lifestyle is the real reason that the majority of the people that come to Kansas City call it home because once they get here, 
then it becomes a part of who it is. And I'm telling you, the energy and the electricity here is just so great. It's so Midwestern, I guess, is a great way to say it. Now, when it comes to the weather, you will definitely see all four seasons. You're gonna see summer, spring, winter, and fall. Some years, the winter may be a little bit more vast, you know, in the weather. We might have just like one snowfall for the whole season, and then other winters, we might see 10 snowfalls. It just depends. In the fall, you're gonna see cascades of beautiful trees where the leaves all turn, changing colors. It's a fall vibe, in fact, Fall is my favorite season, love fall. Spring is also beautiful. You will definitely see flowers blooming, the trees are budding, and you will just definitely feel the fresh excitement of summer coming. And speaking of summer, summer is truly amazing. The warmth here is so great. A lot of people say that it is a bit more humid than what they would like, so you might have to change your hairstyle a little bit for a while until you get used to it. There are some pockets of the summer that it gets about a 100 degrees on hot days so if you have an outdoor sports that you like to play or your children plays then definitely take you know care of yourself when it comes to that but we don't have like months and months and months of 100 degree weather it's not like that you will get a good pocket of summer that's hot but it's not like the majority of the summer people think that every time it rains there's a tornado that is just not the case you know we do get them but we don't get them as often as what people think there are sometimes wind bursts that come through a yard. In fact, we've had several trees that we've lost because of the wind burst, but most homes are actually built really solid. They have basement in most of them. So when you are coming here and you're looking for a property, be sure and tell us if you want a house with a basement or if it doesn't bother you, then that will be something that you would wanna take into consideration because of that very reason. In fact, the weather here is so funny. There are some popular memes that are out there about the Kansas City area and it's basically like, if you aren't enjoying the weather today, just wait 15 minutes and it'll change. <laughs> now when it comes to the pros and cons of living here in Kansas City, there are a lot of things to consider when you're moving. Expense uh, is one of them. Pros is that we're definitely more affordable than a lot of the other cities around the nation. We do have four seasons, so if you don't like the four seasons or if you really don't like the cold, then you might want to consider that. We also do, uh, pros are we have a lot of activity. In fact, you can just feel it already, you know, and we have big things going on or big events coming on. The pros are we have just so much going on. There's so much activity here. The other thing is we are really, really close to the Ozarks. The Ozarks are three hours away. And so if you really like the lake type environment, then uh, you can get onto the highway and get to the Lake of the Ozarks. A lot, in fact, a lot of times people will come here and they'll make Kansas City their home. And then what they'll do is they'll go and buy a second home in the Ozarks area and they'll Airbnb it or they'll do something to where that they'll rent it out or at least save it for their family to go to. A lot of times people do have a second home in the Ozarks. Now, as far as the pros and cons are concerned, there's really so many. The thing to figure out is what is best for your family. What is right for you? If you need to live by the airport, then there's great communities there. If you want to be around a lot of the big soccer parts of the area, then Overland Park might be a really good place for you. If you're into competitive softball, there's some websites to go to. It really won't matter where you're at. It just is gonna depend on your lifestyle. If you wanna be in one of those retirement communities or close to one of those cities where the retirement median age is a little bit higher or the, the residential median age is a little higher than we can look in those cities. So it's just gonna really depend. So don't hesitate to reach out and ask me and my team for any of the, the information, my contact, is down below and there's even a link to my calendar as I said below feel free to use that we can jump on a video conference call and I'll walk you through the entire Kansas City area and we'll just really start to focus in on what will match your ideal lifestyle and what will match the correct community and where you want to be at and if nothing else help you get some really general information and get your questions answered so don't hesitate to reach out to me and we are going to help you out and so we are going to help you out now I'm gonna leave two more videos at the end of this. I think you're gonna absolutely love them. They're just a little bit more information about our city and just help you make decisions as well as hopefully make it a whole lot easier for you. And until next time, go out and live that Kansas City life.